Hi everybody, I'm Sophie Bell, AKA the Groomers Vet. Back in May, I took part in the Groomers Lockdown. And from there, I have now formed a relationship with the Whippet Media, and I'm hoping to bring to you a lot of good information over the coming months. So first of all, who am I? <laughs> Sometimes I think, who am I myself? I'm actually a vet, and I've been a vet for 11 years. But weirdly enough, I'm also a qualified dog groomer. I completed my City and Guilds Level 3 back in uh, November 2014. So it's quite useful, I guess, to have me on the team as I do understand veterinary issues, groomer issues, and everything in between. So what do I actually do? Well, obviously I work as a vet. Currently, I don't work so much as a groomer as I have lots of little children. But what I also do is I produce content and a lot of that might be online content and also content that I teach face to face. My business is Animal Love Pet First Aid and currently I have a course on there which is Canine Health and First Aid, which is where some of my information that I bring to you over the coming months will come from, but also extra information that I have designed specifically to help you as a groomer. Lots of exciting things coming with um, my uh, pet first aid company, and those are things such as feline health and first aid, looking at mobility problems with animals and specific courses around skin and other health issues that may be breed related. So that's a little bit about me. But why am I here? So I said to you earlier that I work as a vet and also that I'm a qualified dog groomer. And I do get it. And I think this is where my teaching to you is very, very important. Some of the things that I'm going to be doing over the next few months will be trying to help with the understanding. How does the vet operate around things? How does the groomer operate around things? And how can we unite those things together and become a better team? Because let's face it, some of the things, so for example, one of my videos I've released, recently made for Whippet Media was all about hematomas and matting of the skin. And in there, you will see that in the veterinary world, we don't quite get those oral hematomas that come up when there are mats formed on the skin. So if you send one of your lovely groomed dogs home and they start bleeding from their ear tips, to the owner, it might look like that you've actually cut them. And to the vet, they don't quite understand why that has happened. What I'm trying to do is to help you understand why it might happen, to help you to be able to warn the owner of reasons why it might happen and what they are to expect, and also to bridge that gap again between the vets and yourself so that you don't get blamed for these things, because that's so important. Some of these things that go on where you feel like somebody is saying it's your fault, that happened during the groom. In fact, it's not, it's just a misunderstanding. And the more I get that communication out there, the better it will be for all pet professionals, for the veterinary world and for owners alike. So what sort of things will I be releasing with the Whippet Media? Well, I just said to you that there'll be something around matting and oral hematomas and the sort of things that you want to talk about with owners and why it happens, etc. I'm going to also look at some of those more, I guess, controversial topics, anal glands for one. There's quite a lot around that topic and I really hope that you enjoy all the information that I bring to you as to why there's problems with anal glands. Some of the things that you can do at home or tell your owners or help and guide your owners to do at home with their pets. You will hear me talk about pumpkin probably in more than one or more than one occasion, but definitely when it comes to anal glands, it's absolutely brilliant. And I will also be looking at things like ear plucking too. Do we do it? Don't we do it? Why can we do it? Why can we not do it? So moving from there, although I'll be looking at some of those controversial issues, I'll also be looking at some really interesting factors too. So I will be looking at things like, can you warm an elderly dog up before their groom? Are there exercises that you can do to help them with their joints, make them feel more comfortable? 
And I have the great pleasure in working with a fabulous veterinary physiotherapist who has designed a series of exercises that we can do to warm those older patients up, to make them feel more comfortable and actually warm them down as well after their groom. And that might mean that they feel a little less stiff and are able to stand for longer on the table and feel more comfortable and to help you with your business and your time and the way that you run your business. So those are all really, really important. So I won't just be looking at necessarily the health implications alone. I'll also be looking at ways that we can help you run your business to kind of prevent things from happening, avoid situations where you might get the blame and also say stop things from happening in the first place. So that stiff dog that's lame that you goes home with, I hope that you don't get to that position. Now, I love to learn new things and I think that's vitally important for anybody working as a pet professional and actually I feel pet owners should do exactly the same. So I know that a lot of you groomers will be learning new grooming techniques, um, ways to sort of handle dogs on the table or indeed cats, because let's not forget cats, because I definitely cover those too. And generally making an environment that you can work better in and that you've learned much more about the whole animal, not just about their coat and how to groom it, about their behavior, about their medical conditions, the whole thing. So that that I want you to do to learn more about them is something that I'm doing. So I am hopefully, as of the next few weeks, going to start my, uh, my diploma in clinical animal nutrition. Now that's pretty exciting for me, but it's also pretty exciting for you because it means that I can tell you or talk to you more about the things that we feed our dogs and give our dogs how it can cause certain ailments, get certain skin conditions, ear problems, joint problems, etc., etc. So I'm going to better myself this end so that I can help you your end. And then if that all goes to plan, then hopefully this time next year, I'll then be starting my master's degree in clinical animal behavior. Why does that matter to you? Well, once again, I'm going to be able to bring content to you to help you to be able to help a variety of animals that you are going to come across. And sometimes it might be simple behavioral techniques that you can use to calm that dog and make the experience much more pleasurable. So I definitely advise you that any seminars or tips or hints that you can get with regards to grooming are vitally important. Of course they are but also learning about the health and the well-being with the pet that you are grooming is also just important. If you team these things together, you're gonna just be 100 times better. Now, what sort of courses am I going to be releasing? Well, I've already told you that I'm going, I've already have my canine health and first aid course, and soon to come is feline health and first aid. And I'm going to be looking specifically at skin problems, nutrition problems, behavioral problems, um, breed related problems, reproductive problems, an awful lot of things. That's me, my end. But you will also be getting short snippets of that, this through the Whippet Media as I'll be making a range of video content for them that you'll be able to get your hands on and learn lots about things to help your pets and those that you groom. Now, going back to that really original question which i've kind of i guess almost answered but why am i the groomer's vet why have i suddenly gained that title you know it actually feels like quite an amazing prestigious title to have and um, it's a really lovely feeling to think that those in the grooming world or any any pet professional world would actually enjoy what I teach and actually gain something from it. And that's, you know, because as vets, you know, lots of us perhaps don't quite get it right. And perhaps we don't come across as what we should come across as to you and to uh, be open and free to speak about things. Well, that's exactly me. I'm open and honest and will freely discuss any topic. I am definitely neutral about lots of things. I'm opinionated about others, don't get me wrong, but we can have a good conversation. So I'm hoping that over these coming months, there'll be 
time for question and answers, conversations that we can have either by live feeds or comments via content that I've pre-recorded. Is that's really important. I need your input. And actually that brings me to the, the whole subject of you. Yes, I do need your input. What I want to know is what are the things that get you in the grooming world with regards to health and first aid? Because obviously I need to be able to teach you how to stop that bleeding tongue, that bleeding wound. I need to help you stop that bleeding nail. I need to help you to be able to deal with that seizure, whether it's on the table or on the floor. I need you to understand the diabetic patient and how if you're grooming them and their blood sugar goes low, what might happen? I need to talk to you about bloat because you know grooming dogs too soon after they've just eaten a large meal could be actually really detrimental to them. So all those basics you need to hear from me and to get that basic knowledge and also that advanced knowledge too because I'm definitely going to teach you the ins and outs and hopefully make it fun so that you remember it. So lots of little things that can trigger in your mind if, if you're caught in a horrible situation like CPR for example, you can remember my really nagging, annoying voice telling you always do more compressions than you do breaths. That's what I want to do. I want to introduce you to me. I want you to engage in what I'm teaching you. And I want to take you above and beyond because that is so important. I want to buy that time for you and your dog or your cat that you are grooming so that you can help them. And also give you amazing tips and hints that you can pass on to the owners of these pets. Because yeah, there is that fine line between diagnosing and advising and yeah you need to make sure that you don't quite step over that line because although technically you can't really get into a lot of trouble because nobody owns you the Royal College kind of owns me so I have to be careful with what I do and what I say and how I practice and I totally respect that but for you you still need to respect the line between making a diagnosis sending an owner up the wrong garden path so to speak and giving advice so i'm hoping that i can be able to give you a few hints and tips to be able to give them and to make you look like you actually care you're not just sending them home that hot spot that you've just realized is underneath that matted patch of skin you're sending them home with a few tips to help them manage that hot spot you're also always going to say i'd get that always checked out if you if you're worried about it but you're going to be able to give them a few hints and tips to be able to help them. So I'm going to give you my ABC to uh, first aid. It's, listen, if I went through all the A's and the B's and the C's that I could teach you, there would be a lot. But for my simple ABC, these are a few things I think you should keep in a pet first aid kit and that you should advise owners about. So A is for this little beauty apple cider vinegar you're going to hear me talk about this so not just about pumpkin i'm going to talk about this stuff as well so apple cider vinegar with the mother because it has to be lovely and organic and not over processed is one of my go-to's and i love it for so many different reasons i love it because it alters the ph of the urine that your bitch or your dog or your cats may pass and for that reason, it can have a great impact on those animals that are getting chronic urinary problems. That's one reason why I love it. I love it because it makes a fabulous ear cleaner. Having worked in an animal charity for a long time where people perhaps didn't have the money to buy conventional ear cleaners, we started to mix white wine vinegar with water and get owners to clean ears with that. And we found we had a great response but actually move to this stuff and you have an even better response. So I am gonna talk about this and I'm gonna give you lots of hints and tips with that. And also I really like it for dealing with mild or minor grazes as well at home. That's my A, one of my A's. There's a lot of things that would go into the A box, but this is one of them. So I love my apple cider vinegar. Haven't got it here because I drank it and that's cold black tea and um, I drank it hot with milk. Don't use it hot and don't put milk in it. So I love cold black tea and I love it for a variety of reasons. So just like my apple cider vinegar, the cold black tea is another go-to. Why do I like it? I like it for sore, irritated, red eyes. 
when I go through all my teaching with you over the coming weeks, when I you know whip it release some of the small short videos that I produce for you, you're gonna know that cold black tea isn't gonna be for every situation. Of course, if you've got a dog that's pressing his head against the wall, is off his food and lots of pain, he needs a vet. But if you've just got that mildly irritated, annoying eye that just seems to be a little bit irritant but isn't completely, you know, awful or maybe that dog you know, that spaniel that wakes up with the eye bogies every morning i know because i've got one cold black tea is a great way to bathe an eye and i often saturate a cotton wool uh, ball and i squeeze it into the eye so i mean an eye bath not a little bathe i mean a big bath i love cold black tea for that I love cold black tea for soothing itching. So if a dog or a cat is really gnawing at a particular area, using it can be lovely. Um, it can really soothe and help an area because you're gonna know as you listen to me, if you choose to listen to me, might have enough after this, that salty water is way off my agenda. No salt water. I mean, you think about your sore skin and you getting into a bath of salty water. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And for you, you're clever enough to say, I'm not gonna touch it. But the dog and the cat's gonna say, I'm gonna lick that more, I'm gonna gnaw that more because that hurts. So there's gonna be lots of things like that that I'm gonna talk about. But going back to my cold black tea, I like it on wounds. And also a lovely little tip for you is that if you get a steeped tea bag, so you've put it into the boiling water, you've let it sit there for a little while and infuse with the water, take it out of the water, pop it into the fridge, that cold tea bag applied to an area that is bleeding can now help to slow or potentially stop that bleed. And that's because tannins constrict blood vessels and slower bleed down. So that's a lovely little a tip for you. So basically, tea bags, most of us have them, keep them in your pet first aid kit. And my third, or my C, I should say, is colloidal silver. Colloidal silver, got a bottle of it here, just one example. And when I speak about products, by the way, I'm not endorsing specific companies, you know, to, to kind of push those. It's just ones that I've come across and I particularly like, but you can make your own decisions as to what you like. Um, but colloidal silver, I love, and I love it for a variety of reasons. And I love it because you can use it on that sore ear and that sore eye and that sore skin, that broken skin. You can use it in that sore mouth. You know, my dog or my cat, has gingivitis, it looks red, it looks angry, it looks inflamed, what can I use? And by the way, when I talk about my ABC, apple cider vinegar, black tea and colloidal silver, these are all natural. So if you decide that in your grooming parlor, I'm going to clean that sore looking ear with a bit of colloidal silver, yes, I may redirect them to the vet afterwards because it doesn't look nice. Even if it doesn't look too bad, you might still do that. But you know you can use these products and not cause any further harm. So I definitely love my colloidal silver. I said it can go in the mouth too, and I also quite like it for kennel cough, and I'm gonna teach you lots about that as well, because that can have an implication on your business in many different ways. You really need to be able to understand it. I have to, just because it's come, come into my brain. Now, if you come on any teaching with me, you will realize I am slightly spontaneous and things definitely kind of crop in, you know, up in my brain. I think I must tell you about that. And, and I get quite overly excited about things, especially when I'm actually teaching you classes because there's just so much that you can do. And I really want to be the one that can help you to be able to understand and do those things. But I'm gonna head back to the A because I need to tell you more about the A, and that is Arnica. You know, yeah, I know, I know right now that some of you out there will be going, Arnica has no proven science behind it, blah, 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 blah. 
I get that, okay? I'm not telling you that this stuff's gonna change the world, right? But what I'm telling you is, is that some of the things I teach you, like with Arnica, I use this fairly frequently in practice if I feel that something's got clipper rash. And again, something we will talk about in different videos as to how to manage things like clipper rash or mild irritation after a wound or, or in fact during a wound. And Arnica is certainly one of my go-tos and I love Arnica cream. And um, you're gonna hear me, in fact, you're probably gonna get bored of me telling you about all of these things. I hope you don't because just like you as a groomer, which is why you're going to head to somewhere like the Whippet Media and get a ton of advice to help you with styles and cuts and handling and products, just like you, because you want to make yourself better, so do I. So I'm constantly evolving, I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly researching. And the people that are gonna benefit from that are going to be you because everything I research and read and learn and put together either within an online course or perhaps with the short videos through the Whip It are going to help you to be better. I think it's important as well is that when you get to check me out um, as the groomer's vet through the Whip It that you know that you can actually approach me with questions too and I'm always happy. Don't sit there and think, I've not done any of her courses. Would she mind if I ask her this question? No, I won't. And I also won't mind if you want to put forward some ideas for some short videos and things that you would like to learn about because this is about you. I have to make sure that I am there to teach you. I don't wanna be boring and talk to you about, you know, let's talk about the ins and outs of preventative medicine because you understand. Someone tells you about that, someone talks to you about that, yeah, I will go off the cuff and tell you some things about preventative medicine and some options to you, like titer testing, worm counts, because I wanna give you options. I wanna open your eyes to pet health. I want to teach you how to deal with an emergency. I want to help you to be able to help your owners to give them advice. And I wanna make sure that you can take care of your own pets and use things for them at home. So that's all of those things are really important to me. And um, so basically, all I can say is, is that over the coming weeks, you're gonna to get to see this face and hear this voice a lot more, which I hope you never get tired of. <laughs> Trust me, my household gets tired of it. But I hope that throughout all of these sessions, you're gonna learn lots. I hope that you engage and contact me and ask for advice. I do want you to know that anything that you learn with me via online learning is always CPD accredited always certificated so that you can feel that you've got something to show to your customers that's really important so whether it be something about skin maybe it might be something about pain and rehabilitation or your canine or feline health and first aid course you'll always have acknowledgement from me from the cbd company to say that you've completed that and that you've learned that it's going to be exciting times ahead no doubt about it my videos are gonna be released soon through Whip It and I really hope that they help you and give you some useful advice. Please do ask me though if you want anything more from me because I am always happy to help. Thank you so much for listening to my introduction. Sophie Bell, the groomer's vet, owner of Animal Love, Pet First Aid, gonna bridge that gap between you, the owner, and the vet, gonna make it all so much better going to create world peace i now feel like i'm just going into a whole new genre basically i'm going to help you to be better I promise you that so i'm going to see you soon over and out <laughs>